Hello and welcome to Ellen Earth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm doing something new for me. I have never done this before and I'm filming my first attempt. <laughs> Call me crazy, I don't know. I am going to try my hand at making hot processed soap today and I'm so excited to do this. I've seen video after video and I've wanted to do this forever and Holly over at Missouri River Soaps did a video and it just it inspired me I'm like you know what I need to just bite the bullet and do this because I really wanted to do this and hot process um, there's several really neat things about hot process and one of them is a much quicker cure time um, it, I still think after the research that I've done it needs to sit for you know about two weeks but that's a half to a third of the time of cold process soap so if you're Soap racks are getting shaved down and empty. Hot process is a great option for a soap that uh, the turnaround time is quicker from the time you make it to the time it's marketable. So, um, and there's some setbacks. It's a little more rustic looking or it can be, although there are a few people out there who have tackled it and have done amazing. I mean like intricate swirls and it looks fantastic. So I'm not going for that. This is my first attempt, so I'm not gonna do anything really ambitious. But uh, what I did want to do with the whole thing going on in our nation and um, a lot of hand washing and things, I wanted to do sort of a mock thieves, and Holly did this also, uh, a mock thieves essential oil sort of blend. And I thought a hot process soap would be the perfect way to do that because you wait till it's already done with the cook and then you add your essential oils. So I feel like more of the properties of those essential oils will remain in this soap. That's my thought and that's what I'm going to try today. So my essential oil blend I get um, on Amazon and I know there's people out there that are passionate about their essential oils and their particular brand um, and I kudos to you. They would be really expensive if I did um, a really high-end essential oils. I get like now brand and stuff from Amazon but the essential oil blend that I'm using today is parts uh, cinnamon bark, clove, eucalyptus, lemon, and rosemary. And popular. Um, so this is just my blend and I'm not going to tell you the proportions. Uh, I'm going to let you do your research because each essential oil has a different amount and usage rate and so and you need to be very careful. Um, they're wonderful but you also need to be educated in how to use them. So anyway that is what I'm going to put in here. I just wanted to make a really wonderful um, hot process soap. I'm just excited to try this. So you're coming along with me. This is my first time. I'm going to link in the description box below Holly's video because she nailed it and um, this is based on kind of her as the springboard so I'm giving her full credit for this video and then she linked a couple others. I will link a couple other of hot process soapers that have nailed this thing down. I am going to tweak it a little um, I'm not going to do a full copy, but uh, I'm going to put yogurt in my hot process soap. I've read article after article and apparently that makes it a little more fluid in the pour and there is no risk of rancidity and things. So I did, some, did my research on that. Um, so I will share the recipe that I'm using today in the description box and uh, that's what I'm doing. So ah, let's pull it together and give this a try. You're coming with me for my very first time. So what I've got going on here is all my hard oils and butters. I've got 12 ounces of coconut oil, 6 ounces of organic sustainable uh, ethically harvested palm oil, 4 ounces of cocoa butter, and 2 ounces of shea butter. And the cocoa butter is those little wafers. I'm going to just give this a melt in the microwave. I have my crock pot heating here on high just to get everything warm. I have my lye with the silk and sodium lactate cooling, but I'm gonna just give this a little buzz in the microwave and get a head start and then we'll measure in our liquid oils and get it all in the crock pot. All right, I've got all my oils, the hard oils, and they're almost melted, but they'll finish off in here. And so my liquid oils is 15 ounces of olive oil, 15 ounces of rice bran oil, and six ounces of castor. And so I'm gonna get all my oils poured in here to my crock pot that I have on high, just getting nice and heated up, and then I will turn it down here on low when I go to add my, um, my lye solution. One of the cool things about this hot process, of course, now you're coming with me, this is my first time, so 
is um, but you can do things that would typically speed up trace in a cold process like that high of a volume of castor oil would be hard to work with in cold process. Um, castor oil is wonderful. It makes good bubbles. It's a great soap additive. But if in you know higher doses like that, it can speed up your trace. So that's a really cool thing. And of course, um, this sort of mock-up thieves blend I'm using has uh, cinnamon bark and clove in it, and those are notorious for speeding up trace. Um, and the rosemary too. So it's really cool to be able to work with some of these things and not have to fret about, you know, moving fast. So I'm really excited to be doing this today. Um, again, you're coming along with me, so please try to um, be merciful in the comments section and helpful. This is, uh, you know, a learning and this is, I try to have a very friendly site where we encourage each other. So I'm not an expert hot process maker and there's tons of wonderful videos and tutorials out there that are. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, I would suggest you go and search one of those up. So you're just coming along with me as I give this a try. It's something I've been so curious to do and I figured I'd just bring you all along with me. So let's keep it positive and uplifting. So I'm just waiting for these hard oil chunks to melt. Actually, I'll go ahead and throw my stick blender in here. This is so funny. It's, I mean, it's counterintuitive for me to do these things because I actually want the trace, I guess. I, so I can blend those in. Let me tell you, uh, before I do that, I'm gonna get my gloves on so we can get our... Okay. Got my gloves on. Let me tell you about my lye. Um, I did say that I added Tussa silk fibers and uh, sodium lactate in there at a rate of, let's see, for this volume today, I used four teaspoons of sodium lactate and I also put in two teaspoons of um, organic cane sugar in here and that's supposed to aid in the bubbles. So um, pardon the blending noise here. This old beat up crock pot is just for my soap room. I use this for any, um, my rebatching and stuff. So it is exclusively a uh, soap room crock pot. In its early years, it was in my kitchen. <laughs> all right, we've gotten all the soap chunks blended. I'm trying to figure out, let me see if I can raise you up and get a better angle here for you all to see down in here. Let's see, does that help? We'll go with it. Um, so I noticed a lot of hot processors use the cling wrap over here and um, I don't have any right now, but my lid has a little rubber seal. So I'm hoping that that will trap in the moisture that we want. So, oh boy, I'm talking and postponing the inevitable. Let's just go ahead and get this lie in here and get rolling. I mean, this is what it's all about. And I'll put in our, uh, the ascent, let me turn this down to low and start blending. We're gonna put in um, the essential oils and yogurt after we're done cooking this and it's in the cooling down process. Because um, we definitely don't want the wonderful benefits of the essential oils to dissipate off. So I think we're going for um, like a medium trace here and then we pop the lid on and let it do its magic. Boy, this is weird. <laughs> I'm hoping I love this. I've seen, I've watched several videos on YouTube of ladies that have this down to a science and they can make intricate swirls and I'm so impressed. I'll just be tickled if we get a nice product here and get it in the mold. Maybe I'll try and do a swirl. We'll see how fluid it is. I'm not, you know, gonna promise anything, but we'll see. I'm keeping my options open. All right, we're definitely, definitely have, you know, a light trace. So I guess I'll go a little bit more here. Go up for a nice medium trace. So 
Sorry about that scratching sound on the bottom. This um, is dragging on the bottom of my crock pot and it kind of sounds like nails on a chalkboard to me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, it's a nice medium trace. Um, I'm not sure if I could should stop now or keep going. I wish y'all were here with me. What do you think? Should I stop or keep blending? I'll blend just a minute more and then I think I'm gonna put the lid on. All right, I think uh, I'm gonna pull this out and set this to cooking. Oh boy, this is an interesting thing. All right, there we go lids on and we will come back um, when it starts to do its thing so and I will let you know how long that is when we come back I have no idea how long that's gonna be all right I turned off one of the overhead lights so hopefully you can see it's starting to gel up and fold in on itself I don't want to lift the lid off um, this crock pot lid has some little vents so I just put some damp cloths over that but I wanted to show you what I have going on here this is my yogurt that I'm gonna put in after it's cooked uh, it's Four, three tablespoons of yogurt um, but I have it just up here to warm up from the things that I've read on keeping your hot process fluid is to use like warm containers to mix in warm additives after it's done cooking because when it cools is when it starts getting really rustic and crumbly so I have the um, silicone mold that I'm going to be pouring into or scooping into it's in the oven right now at 170, just on the warmest setting in the oven. So that is gonna be, my mold will be warm, uh, my additives will be warm. I just kind of have them kind of around the crock pot here with radiant heat, so nothing's gonna shock it with cold. So anyway, um, but it is starting to cook up. This is exciting, so we'll come back when it's ready to stir. All right, I am gonna take the lid off and stir this. It's almost all the way, um, opaque but let's get in here and stir it around I want to make sure the middle part here gets cooked up boy this is just fascinating for me as a cold process soap maker to do this <laughs> it's a really cool I'm this is neat um, so some of the things I have going on are in case I have a fluid enough to um, to do a swirl I have some red reef clay uh, sitting in about a teaspoon of warm water that I'll use for a color swirl if I'm able. If not, no big deal. Um, there we go. Let me knock down the sides here. And I have one ounce of unrefined organic hemp oil that I want to do a super fat with. So I will be actually adding that in too. Also, when I do my yogurt in there, um, I saw a couple people said you could super fat. So I'll be adding that in there. Uh, I have my essential oils measured out for the proper amount. Um, but that's all gonna happen after this cools and it's done cooking. And I think we're getting really close. I'm going to give this, so that has been a total of about 40 minutes to get up to this stage. Um, and I'm going to give it maybe another 10 minutes and then I will do a cook, a zap test. I have my little pH strips here and we'll make sure that it's all cooked before I turn off the heat and we get moving on. It's been about another 10 minutes and I'm going to give this a stir and I'm going to do a um, little... Uh, Zap, not a zap test, I keep calling it that, a pH test with my pH strips and see if we're cooked. And we'll turn the heat off. As soon as I'm cooked all the way, I'll turn the heat off this and let it start cooling down and we'll add our additives. But until I know that it's cooked with my pH strips, the gloves stay on. So let me set this down. I'm going to just put a little bit in this cup run some hot water over it I'll show you that I'll just use the handle on this and stir it up and make a nice little bubble with my soap in there and here's my pH strip and let's see look at that it is well let me set this down so you can see it's green so I'll show you here it's right in the middle where we need to be for soap. It's at a 
Looks like about an eight. Between an eight and a nine. So we're good to go. I'm gonna turn this crock pot off and the radiant heat will keep it warm. I'm gonna take the gloves off now and um, add my super fat and my yogurt. All right. So, this is my one ounce of unrefined hemp oil that I'm going to super fat this with. I'm hoping that this works out okay. Let me take the temperature here. So 192. Definitely don't want to add my essential oils until I get around 170 because they will just dissipate off. And one of the neat things about a hot process is you add it in after the cook, so um, it's not, I think it retains more of the properties, if, if I'm saying that correctly. I don't know, I'm just taking a guess. But let me go ahead and add my yogurt. My yogurt is warmed up here, but I definitely don't want to curdle, but I'm gonna add it in here now. So the yogurt is supposed to make it more fluid, which is cool, plus yogurt's really good for your skin. And um, I read lots of articles on bacterias and um, because it's not going through the saponification process, is rancidity an issue? And no, it's not. Um, there's a couple of really neat scientific articles on why the yogurt is stable in a hot process soap. And it was very good, and I was convinced after reading them that it's totally safe, and not just safe, but beneficial. So that's why I threw it in there. Plus, it makes it more fluid, which <laughs> I would really love to be able to do a swirl today if I can. All right. Got that stirred in, and I don't want this to dry out, so I'm going to put the lid on this for a sec and let it cool down. And then we'll split, uh, we'll put our essential oils in and split off for our color. Okay, we're ready to move on to the next step. So uh, I've got my mold warmed up. I actually warmed up this uh, dish in the microwave for the split off to color with. Everything's warm, so I think we're going to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and get the essential oils um, stirred in here. And that is such a nice scent. Really like that. So these are going to be all natural. Um, again, the color that I'm going to use is Red Reef Clay, Australian Red Reef Clay, which is gorgeous. So this is going to be wonderful, all natural soap. I'm so excited. I'm hoping it stays fluid. This is, I love trying new things. You know, this is kind of fun. All right, I think I've got the essential oils blended in there pretty good. So I'm going to scoop out some for my color. Let's do... Oh, we'll do a little more. Why not? There we go. Do that. Oh, stir this to the side. Here's my red reef clay that I had sitting in some water. And we'll stir that in. And got to move along here while everything's still warm and fluid. All right, I think we've got it. Set. Get a little of this down in the bottom here. And I just had to put these clips on because my silicone liner was um, warping and I wanted to be able to get in the middle here without making too much of a mess.
going to run a hanger through this. Uh, my, it's not really a hanger, it's a gear tie. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them in any tool store. Uh, they make fabulous hanger tools here, I'll show you. It's just a gear tie and you can bend it to fit any mold. So let me tap this down for It's the next day, uh, and there's the top, pretty rustic, but um, I put this in the fridge for a few hours after I got it in the mold to cool it off, and then um, it sat out here in my basement, which is very cold anyway. So let's get it out of the mold and see what we've got. It smells really good. That blend of essential oils is really nice. So, I'm wondering if I have a lot of air pockets in here. The sides look cool. Oh, I can't wait to cut this. All right, let's get our first slice here. Ooh, these are pretty inside. And the top is, you know, it's rustic, but not bad. I like it, and I don't have air bubbles. Wow, this is pretty awesome. I'm going to run this through my log splitter so that I can uh, do a tall skinny cut on it, and I will have some nice sample bars. I've got us loaf now, a tall skinny loaf, which I prefer because I fit them in my boxes. I'm really tickled with these. I think I'm going to revisit this and uh, I, I like this very much. It's kind of cool and now these are, you know, it's firm but I'm going to let these sit for probably about two weeks just to finish drying up and be nice rock hard. But um, Wow, I'm pretty tickled. These are awesome. So I wanted to talk about how, um, you know, the comments, I am definitely not a hot process expert by any means, and I just want to keep it positive. But I wanted like to say, I, I am so impressed with the soap community. I have never met a more positive, uplifting community of people. Soapers are so um, encouraging and kind and sharing helpful tips and not hating. I'm just, it just blesses my heart to see um, what a kind community this is. And I thank you, all you guys that watch my videos and leave encouraging comments and um, it just, it, it really matters. I read every comment and it, it matters and it's so uplifting and I like to encourage other people too so I feel like good begets good and kindness begets kindness and so I think it's wonderful so thank you all and uh, this is my first attempt at hot process I would love any pointers anybody has to share um, tips helpful tips please share away but let's keep it really kind and helpful So the swirls are wispy now at this end of the loaf, but boy, this is cool. I did notice the interesting thing about hot process is you've got to deal within the confines of a crock pot for me. Um, I've seen other people do it on a stove top and um, I'm a little intimidated by that yet, but I might give it a whirl at some point. But uh, if I was gonna try a double batch, I'd have to get two crock pots going, I think. All right, we're gonna call that done. I'm not gonna slice that down. So there it is. Let's clean these up and get them stamped.